The main goal for any Google Ads campaign is that it will continue to generate sales, revenue, and inquiries for any business on a long-term basis. So the real success for any Google Ads campaign can't be judged after the first month, and it can't even be judged after the first three months because you can only look at the long-term success for a Google Ads campaign when you're starting to get strong year-on-year -year data. And the reason for this is because Google Ads doesn't operate in a vacuum in that it's the only thing and it's operating by itself. Because any Google Ads campaign has a lot of external forces and these external forces come from a range of different areas, including other competitors. So if you have a new competitor enter into your market and start to bid on the same keywords as you're targeting, that will have an effect of increasing the cost per click for the search terms that you're looking at targeting. And it may not even be new competitors entering in your market. It may be that some well-known competitors just start to drastically increase the amount of money that they're spending in Google Ads. And this too will have the same effect of increasing your cost per click and other core factors, making it more challenging for your Google Ads campaign to be successful. And this doesn't even include some of those external factors like what we saw with COVID over the previous couple of years or any local events like local elections, local weather patterns. These can all have small and large effects on your Google Ads campaign. And it's for all of these reasons for why you need to have a very strong optimization process when you're optimizing your Google Ads account so that you can make sure that you're setting up your campaign success for the long term, not just getting a very quick win that only lasts for a couple of weeks. So right now, I wanna show you what long-term success can look like in a Google Ads campaign. Now, what we have here is a long-term view of an account. And what you can see here is actually a three-year view from 2019 all the way through to the end of 2021. Now, this is broken down by quarters, and at the first glance, it may not look like anything spectacular but you do have to remember the seasonality in the business. And let's look at the results for the first quarter in 2019. And the main thing I wanna focus on is our conversion value and our conversion value cost. And in the first quarter of 2019, this was at 458 with a conversion value of just under 15,000. And then when we fast forwarded to the first quarter of 2020, our conversion value cost went up to 6.29 with the total conversion value going to 24,000. And then when we fast forward to the first quarter of 2021, that conversion value cost actually went up to 7.51. So you can see in the space of two years, we took our conversion value all the way up to 7.51 when it was starting at 4.58. But looking at those external factors, what I wanna show you here is what actually happened with the CPC. And you can see here that in the first quarter of 2019, our CPC was at 49 cents. It then went up to 63. And at the moment, it's up to all the way at 86 cents. So it's nearly doubled. And this has actually seen an increase in our cost per conversion. But when you actually go through and have a look at our conversion rate, you can see that we've been highly successful in getting our conversion rate up from about 5.5% to it now sitting constantly above 8% quarter on quarter. And so you can see even though we're seeing these dips and troughs, we are seeing a continual increase in our campaign even with external factors like our CPC increasing. So what I wanna go through in this video is the top five optimization tips and strategies that you need to be using in your Google Ads account so that you too can see that continued year-on-year -year success with your Google Ads campaigns. But before we get into today's teaching, just in case we haven't met yet, my name is Aaron Young and I'm your 15,000 hour Google Ads master. And I've been creating and optimizing Google Ads campaigns since 2010. So if you wanna keep up to date with profitable strategies that are working in Google Ads right now, why don't you give me a quick subscribe? Thank you very much. So let's get straight into it. And the first optimization tip that I wanna share with you is that you need to always be completing regular search term audits every 72 hours. Completing a regular search term audit is probably one of the most simple to do optimization actions that you can do in your Google Ads account, but it is also one of the most effective optimization actions that you can complete for your Google Ads campaign. Now, I will admit that if this is a new campaign or if you've only started to do some regular search term audits, I will admit that sometimes this action can actually be a little bit time consuming, but it is so important and it is so valuable. And that is for two core reasons. The first one is, is that when you actually go through and review all of your individual search terms, you are able to add in some new negative keywords to your campaign. And by adding in these new negative keywords, you're actually then filtering out 
and stopping any new search terms which you know are not gonna convert from them triggering ads in your campaign and causing you to spend money with no result. And the second advantage of doing regular search term audits is it actually allows you to find and discover some new or longer tail search terms that users are using which are converting which you may not have thought of or considered. And then by finding and adding in those new search terms, you can then also add them into your ad copy so that you are now targeting some individual and smaller used search terms but which have very high conversion rates. And let me show you a quick example right now. So we've gone into the search term sections of these campaigns. And what you can actually see here is I've gone through each and every search term which actually triggered an ad. And I've done two things. If I see any search terms which have triggered ads, which I know are not gonna be profitable for our business, I can then select them and then also add them as a negative keyword. Now for these two ones which I've selected here, for example, Hallam and also Ballarat. The reason why they were added is I know they're in a location or an area which this company does not provide services for. And then the second thing that we can actually do is I was actually also able to find some longer tail search terms like small business IT support near me and also IT services for small business, which I added to the account because I found that they were actually converting at a higher rate. And by completing these actions regularly, you can actually see that we heavily increase the number of phone calls and conversions that this campaign was getting and the core action we were doing throughout this time period is completing regular search term audits every 72 hours or every three days. And the second best practice that I want to talk about is making sure that you have the correct campaign structure. And having the correct campaign and account structure not only goes across all of your individual campaigns but it also goes across all of your account and making sure that you have your campaign structured so that they're working together properly. And one of the best ways that you're making sure that those campaigns are working together properly is making sure that you have your budgets allocated correctly for your campaigns. Now, when it comes to the correct structure for your individual campaigns, what I'm gonna do if you stay around to the end of this video, I'm gonna share some links with you so that you can actually see the correct structures that you should be using for your search and your shopping campaigns. Because right now I wanna briefly talk to you about making sure and the importance of having the correct structure for your budgets through all of your campaigns in your account. And the two core things that you wanna do here is that you wanna make sure that you're actually spending the most money so you've got the highest daily budget set for the campaigns which are actually generating the most revenue. I'm amazed at the amount of times that when I take on an account or I'm doing a review for an account is that you'll actually see that the highest performing campaigns in terms of conversions and conversion revenue sometimes actually has one of the smaller amounts of budgets which has been allocated to it. So you've got a campaign which has huge potential but is being limited because it's actually got a small campaign budget. And then on the other hand, you have some campaigns which are spending a large amount, but just aren't getting the same level of results. So the first thing that you wanna be doing is just quickly going through and having a look at all of your individual campaigns and reviewing how much are they spending or how much budget have you allocated to them versus what is the revenue or the level of conversions that they're actually generating for your business. And just by simply reordering some of your budgets and placing some priority on some of those campaigns which have high conversions but low spend and taking away some of that budget from campaigns which have a high spend but low conversions, you can very, very quickly see an increased performance in your account. Now, I know that sounds like a really simple bit of advice, but once again, I'm amazed at how many people actually get that wrong or don't even check that. And then leading into that, one of the other metrics that you do want to be checking is that you want to be checking your search impression share for an individual campaign. Now, if you can't see this data straight away, what you do need to do is go into the column section of your campaign view and add in that search impression share. And what I'd be looking at here is that when you have a search impression share of 80%, meaning that your ads are actually already achieving 80% of all searches, that then means that that's a campaign where I would not be adding in any extra budget to. From there, your only real optimization option is to go through those optimization settings and try to increase the performance of that campaign as high as you can, because there's no point of increasing that budget any further. So recapping on that point, we wanna make sure that we've got our budgets allocated correctly within our account to make sure that our account has a good, strong individual structure where we're allocating out the correct budgets 
to the correct campaigns. Now, the third best practice that I want you to implement into your Google Ads campaign is to always be completing regular ad copy split tests. And your ad copy split tests are a never ending cycle which need to be repeated every 30 days. And when you're completing one round of split testing, I just want you to focus on one individual thing. So don't look to split test multiple different items. So for example, in a single round of split testing, you may just be looking at testing the effectiveness of two different types of headlines to be shown in position three. And right now, let's jump into a screen share so I can show you how to complete proper split testings very quickly. So what we're looking at here is we're looking at the split testing that I've carried out in this ad group from January through to June. And you can see these are the different split tests that we've completed. And what you can also see from here is that we've actually brought down our cost per conversion from $51 to where it's performing at now at either $27 or $34. And some of the split tests that we've been doing is that we've actually been going through and testing the different headlines. So the ones that we've got active at the moment is that we're looking at two core things. So in our previous learnings, we've already worked out that we have a much better performance when we actually pin in this keyword focus into headline number one. So what we're testing now is we're testing the difference of some different call to actions which have been pinned into position three. So this ad is actually doing a test from just $39 per month. And the second ad, it still has those pinned in headlines with the keyword focus running in through here. But what we are testing is in position three, we're testing a different call to action, which is a request a free demo. So in our first rounds of split testing is that we were able to find out very, very strongly that these ads perform better when we've got a pinned in keyword focus in headline one. And what we're now looking to test is we're testing the effectiveness of those different call to actions when they're pinned into position three. Now we're still early in this data collecting cycle. So once we complete this split testing and we know the winning call to action, we will then create another split test, which is then looking at testing some different elements. So we might move on to testing our descriptions and finding out which descriptions work better, or we may even look to add in some different headlines to see what performs better in that total ad. And my best practice point number four is to review as many data points as possible. Now you may have heard of that old saying that information is power, and this is 100% true when it comes to Google Ads. Now, Google Ads is a form of marketing, but its success isn't only built on the fancy headlines and descriptions or the different images you use, because a core factor of its success is your ability as the Google Ads specialist to be able to review the data and then make the correct optimization decisions from that data so that you can increase the performance of your Google Ads account. So what you need to be doing in your Google Ads account is not just reviewing data like your keywords and your ad copy, but also going deeper into the data that Google gives you. Say for example, looking at your demographic and audience data and adding in some extra bid optimizations for those best performing audience groupings and demographic groupings, looking at your device targeting to find out which devices are performing better because you may have a campaign that performs really, really well with mobiles, but doesn't perform so well with computers. And if that's the case, you can then exclude computers so that you're focusing more budget and then getting more results because you're focusing your spending on your highest performing device, which might be mobile. And then further than that, you can also go into some further detail by looking at your day of the week reports or your hour of the day reports to actually find out when people are not only clicking your ad, but when they're actually completing those conversion actions. And you might find it that all of your conversion actions happen in a three hour window of the day. And if you're seeing a prolonged trend in that way, you could then turn off your ads so that you're only focusing your spending on those three hours when you know you get some higher level of conversions. Now I can't give you any hard and fast rules here because your decisions will be dependent on the data that you're seeing. So what I wanted to stress is that I just wanna make sure that you're regularly looking at those extra data points that you may not consider. So what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that you're not just looking at your keywords and your ad copies, but you're also looking at all of those extra data points which Google gives you access to, like your demographics, your audiences, your devices, and also your time of day and day of the week data. And then that brings us to our fifth and final point, which is you need to stick to a regular optimization schedule. The worst thing that you can do with Google Ads is go into a Google Ads campaign 
and not know what optimizations you need to be completing on a certain day. And the reason for why this is so important is because when we're optimizing a Google Ads campaign, there's two things in play. There's our manual optimizations, which we complete, and then there's also those automated optimizations, which Google will complete for you. And that is why there's some things that you need to do on a regular basis, like twice a week, like your search term audits, and then there's other items which you don't wanna review until like every 90 days. And that's for things like your campaign settings. You don't wanna be reviewing and changing your campaign settings from maximize clicks to maximize conversions through to targeting ROAS, every seven days. Otherwise, the algorithm will never have a chance to actually find out what is working best on your account. And this is the reason for why I've actually created my Google Ads Optimization Checklist. Now with my Google Ads Optimization Checklist, so it takes you through and lists everything that you need to complete. But then what it also does is it actually gives you a really clear indication of how often you actually need to complete this task. So whether that would be every 72 hours, every week, every month, or every 90 days. So for example, with their search term audits, where we add in extra negative keywords or add in extra long tail search terms, that's something that we do twice a week or every 72 hours. And then when we go through and review our match types, we do that weekly. And the same as well, where we're reviewing some different ad groups. But then when it comes to completing some different ad copy split testing, is that something that's not done every week, it's actually done every 30 days or every month. And then finally, in and around our bid optimizations and audience and demographic targeting, yeah, as you can see through here, that's something that is actually done every 90 days. But what I've also done in this is that in your optimization checklist, you've actually got this column to add in some different notes. And this is a really strong, powerful reminder for you that if you do go through and complete some different ad copy split tests, say for example, down here, you can actually write in some different notes of what you're actually testing. So for example, in July, you might be going through and saying, we're testing a new call to action, and you can even type in that call to action. And then that gives you some really clear notes on what you're currently testing and what you're working on in your Google Ads campaign. Now, if you don't yet have a copy of my Google Ads optimization checklist, and you want your free copy today, all you need to do is to follow the link in the description, fill out the form so that you can get your free Google Ads optimization checklist straight away. So there you go, there are my top five best practices that you need to be completing in your Google Ads account. Now remember early in the video where I was talking about making sure that your campaigns have the correct structure and that they are set up in the correct way. And if you would like to see how to correctly structure and set up your Google Shopping campaigns, I want you to go through and watch this video right here. Or if you'd like to know how to correctly set up and structure your Google search campaigns, why don't you go through and watch this video right here. Once again, thank you for joining me and I look forward to seeing you in one of these two videos right now. See ya.